Hello, everybody. My name is Zen, and it's time to talk about Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know, I did a massive Dragon Age playthrough. Uh, I played through all of Origins, all of Dragon Age 2, and that was all in the lead up to the launch of Dragon Age Inquisition, which uh, we're getting really close here to the sixth anniversary of that series starting, which is pretty crazy. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition came out at the end of November 2014, and obviously we're towards the beginning of November um, <laughs> 2020. Actually, it was November 18th that the game came out, and that was the upload of our first uh, Inquisition episode. That series, and in fact, the entire Dragon Age series, continues to be one of my most watched things consistently today. So people like to go back and just watch that old series. Now, I don't suggest it because uh, the transition from <laughs> Origins to Dragon Age 2 to Dragon Age Inquisition was during a time when I was uh, doing this more just for the love of it than for anything else. And I'm, you know, I'm still doing that, but I hadn't upgraded my equipment. So like the microphone quality is not the greatest. I didn't really know how to commentate over large open world games. And now at this point, I am a master, which is why we play all sorts of really crazy long form RPGs on the channel. But that was basically the genesis of all of that. If you don't count, you know, like Star Wars, the Old Republic stuff. So if you wanted to go back and watch that stuff, I would just jump in on Inquisition unless you really wanted to go through the entire playthrough. But that is a lot of video stuff. So why do I want to talk about Inquisition since it's been, you know, six years since I put up that series? Well, I think right now, more than ever, is the time to talk about it because we're at that weird point in the development of the next Dragon Age game where we don't quite know a lot about it. In fact, we know very little about it. We know it's still, even in 2020, in early development, and that's due to some Anthem stuff that we'll talk about later on in this video. But in general, like it, it's been six years, and it is time to look back at this game and be like, was it any good? Because we know that Dragon Age Origins is a classic. It's gonna remain a classic, Everybody freaking loves that game. There's a reason it is so good. Dragon Age 2 obviously has its fans, but does Dragon Age Inquisition hold up after six years, especially in light of way bigger and better games coming out, in my opinion? Well, we're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about, you know, how does Inquisition hold up, if it holds up at all? And, of course, we're going to talk about what's coming next for the game and what kind of influences other games uh, have have had on the series and what we should expect to see once the new Dragon Age does come out, which I'm expecting at least two years from now. It's like 2022, but we'll probably get something trailer-ish in 2021. Um, that's my prediction, but it could be even later than that because uh, I, I would suggest that they are still quite early in development. Now, what spurred this idea of talking about Inquisition was actually my wife, who is... Uh, super pregnant at the moment and she's due in December, but she can't sit at her computer and play games currently due to just pains and all of the stuff that comes with, uh, you know, getting ready to have a baby. And so we're sitting there and, I, she, you know, she's on the couch being like, I, it sucks. I can't play games. I'm like, we have an Xbox. You can play games. And she played through Fable uh, and jumped in through and did, did all the way through Fable 3. But it was like, you know, she was kind of jonesing for maybe a little bit better of a game, a little bit better of an RPG. So I suggested Dragon Age Inquisition. So on our Xbox uh, One S that we own at this time, even though we're three days out from new the new Xbox coming out at the time that this video is being uploaded, um, we, you know, I, I decided, hey, why don't you play Dragon Age on the Xbox and uh, see how you like it? Because I'm not just going to have her jump in on Dragon Age uh, Origins or Dragon Age 2 because those games are a little bit dated at this point. Uh, and I did just get done telling you that Origins is a freaking fantastic game. But even for someone who is new to the series, I don't think that they should necessarily jump in on Origins. Now, Mass Effect has the same problem, right? Like 
if you want someone to get into Mass Effect, you're like, oh, you have to play through the trilogy. But you know that they have to go play the original Mass Effect. And it makes you go, oof, uh, maybe just jump in on two because that is like one of the best games of all time. And then do three and maybe hit and drop. Like it's like an awkward spot. But hey, you know, some of that got fixed because today is November 7th. It is N7 day. And Bioware has announced that they're going to do an entire remaster of Dragon or not Dragon Age of uh, Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3, which is awesome. I literally cannot wait for that. And it comes out spring next year. But sitting there watching her play on the TV, you know, I'd sit on the couch and be like, oh, you, you got to make sure you do this thing in the game or like this is how certain things work because obviously she's never played really a Bioware game ever. And it really made me want to play the game. So I jumped in, I downloaded it on my computer. I started playing it again, started my warrior on Nightmare, which you're seeing the gameplay footage of me just kind of messing around and playing the game about midway through at this point, about 35 to 38 hours in from what you're seeing. And it was eye opening to say the least. And it is what got me decidedly interested in talking about Dragon Age Inquisition on the channel again, and of course talking about the Dragon Age series as a whole. But with all of that out of the way, I want to start with talking about does Dragon Age Inquisition hold up as a game today? I know it has only been six years since it's released. However, there have been some really major releases since then that have, I would say, completely transformed what an open world RPG could look like, especially, you know, following the launch of Inquisition. And you kind of remember game development takes a long time and Inquisition was in development for a while. You know, Dragon Age 2 came out like what, 2011, something like that. So to have Inquisition come out in 2014, um, that's not, you know, they jumped right on Inquisition. They, They didn't jump right on the next Dragon Age game after Inquisition. I mean, kind of they did, but there's a lot of information there, which we'll talk about when we get to the Anthem part of this video. But for the most part, uh, they they really just kind of jumped into the Inquisition development and they were taking the lessons at the time, you know, back in 2011 that that was learned about open world RPGs and even like Skyrim coming out had a pretty big impact on how Inquisition was developed. And in turn, Inquisition's development had a big impact on what Mass Effect Andromeda would end up looking like. But because we're having this weird gap uh, where there weren't many Bioware games in development, things had changed at the studio significantly since Uh, Inquisition came out, even like Casey Huntson coming back to the studio after having left and EA tightening their grip on the publishing side of things, uh, things things have definitely changed and we saw a big uh, effect of that, I would say, with Anthem. Now, Anthem, as it stands right now, is a game that has gotten enough updates that it is worth it to go back and play it because it is a lot of fun to play. But that doesn't fix the fact that when it was coming out, it was inherently flawed because it was it was uh, informed by decisions in a weird time during game development where, you know, you were between Dragon Age Inquisition and with a Witcher 3 coming out and Anthem, while learning some lessons from Inquisition and Andromeda development, didn't quite tip over enough to get enough momentum where the game would be absolutely excellent and obviously there were some mistakes made along the way in the development of that game that that caused it to be the way it was at launch so again we're looking at inquisition coming out in 2014 in a really weird time where there was about to be a significant amount of new rpgs that were about to release big rpgs that were about to release that were going to change the face of essentially the RPG genre as a whole. So in general, it's weird to look back at Inquisition and to go play it because it is excellent. It is fantastic. There is a reason why people gave it Game of the Year the year it came out. Um, Now, I would say that for me, there, in hindsight, there have been significantly better games since then. And Inquisition doesn't quite hold up to those specific games. However, Going back and just playing Inquisition for what it is, you're like, oh yeah, this is a lot of fun. 
But the thing that constantly comes back to me in this game and while playing it, and something that even my wife has noticed, and she's like a hundred and something hours in, she's just now doing Jaws of Hakan and the Descent DLC before she goes and finishes the game. Like she's, she has the last mission queued up in the game, but she's going to go do the DLC first and then do Trespasser afterwards. And she's experiencing the same thing that I have experienced. I think everybody has experienced with this game, which is you have these big open world zones that have a lot of stuff to do in them, but it's the same stuff to do in them in every single zone. You know, you have your shards, you have your asteriums or astrariums or whatever they're called. You have, you know, different camps to go get. You've got things to collect as far as uh, resources. You have different missions in those zones. And then most uh, effectively in every single zone, you have rifts to go and close. And it's this process that you get through the hinterlands. Say you don't even spend your time in the hinterlands. Instead, you spend a little bit of time there. Then you go to the Storm Coast. Then you go to Crestwood or whatever. Like maybe you jump around your zones quite a bit, which is what she did, but you're still running into the same issue of you're doing the exact same things in every zone over and over and over and over and over and over again for like a hundred hours in the game if you want to do everything. And that in itself, I think is Inquisition's biggest sin it is the thing that makes me be like well i could go finish this game or i could just go play other stuff because i've got newer games to play right now do i really want to finish an entire dragon age inquisition playthrough i'm pretty far through the game i could go and just blast it out and get it done and end up getting my achievement for playing through nightmare um which isn't much of an achievement if you're using the golden nug which is something that got added to the game which basically allows you to have like a new game plus mode, quote unquote, where if you played through like we did on the channel, Jaws of Pecan and the Descent stuff um, and even the Trespasser stuff where you gain a bunch of recipes in order to make new gear, like really powerful tier four gear in the game. You can just talk to the Golden Nug at the beginning once you get to Haven and it gives you all those recipes on a new character, which is cool because then you can make all this cool gear right off the bat. You don't have to collect all those recipes again. But at the same time, it does kind of trivialize things. Like um, I have a weapon that has, I don't even remember, it's like 200 or 300 damage on it. At, and at my point in the in the place where I should only have a weapon that has a two-handed weapon that has like 150 damage on it. So it does make things a wee bit easier. But even then, me just blasting through the game, I'm like, this is this is a lot of the same thing over and over and over and over again once you close your like 50th rift you're like okay okay this is this this maybe maybe i'm going to take a break from this but honestly that is my only complaint <laughs> like really when it boils down to it that is my complaint about the game is that there, there's just repetitive content there when you look at the rest of the game, the combat is far superior to Dragon Age Origins and a huge step up from Dragon Age 2. The characters are super enjoyable. The voice acting is some of the best in the series. I feel like the story is actually quite cool. And you know what? G getting Skyhold unlocked, which, by the way, if you didn't know, this, is, this video is going to contain all of the spoilers for Dragon Age. So if you don't... I'm, I'm warning you now before I say other things in the future that will definitely spoil the game for you. But uh, just as a heads up, in case you wanted to go watch the playthrough and then come back to this, uh, that might be what you should do. But w when it boils down to it, it's like getting Skyhold every time gives me chills. When you get the journey to Skyhold uh, theme rolling and Solus is talking, like saying, you know, like you're going to go to a place that nobody knows about you're going to gain skyhold and you'll make the inquisition and blah, blah 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 it's really cool the moments in this game are some of the best in the series i feel like uh there's a couple things in dragon age origins that story-wise i like better than inquisition but as a whole i feel like inquisition has a better story to tell it has through lines through all three of the games that all culminate into this really 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 cool experience and i have mentioned this so many times on the channel when talking about dragon age 2 i i believe dragon age inquisition makes dragon age 2 a far superior game than it was when it was just dragon age 2 because you have the, the DLC where you actually go and fight Corypheus in Dragon Age 2, and that ties into the big bad villain in Dragon Age Inquisition. 
And on top of that, you get cool characters returning that you got to play as, right? You get Hawk coming back in Dragon Age Inquisition. You get Varric as a main companion that you get to run around with. You know, Dragon Age 2 is made a better game in hindsight of Inquisition. You may play through Dragon Age 2 for the first time without having played Inquisition and you're like, okay, this is definitely not as good as Origins, but I'm just kind of slogging through it and combat's better. So it's kind of more fun to play. It's more fluid and I'm just going to get through this. And you do. And by the end of the game, you're like, okay, I'm glad that's over. And then you go and you play Inquisition. You're like, you know what? You look, I'm looking fondly back on Dragon Age 2 because I liked these characters that that game introduced. So in general, I think Inquisition has one of the better stories to tell in the series. I feel like the combat is far improved. And even though it still feels like it has a lot to go in hindsight of modern RPGs, it still is way better than Dragon Age 2 and Dragon Age Origins. And then on top of that, the the companions, the characters, the voice acting, just all of the important things when it comes to an RPG are really, really good. And yes, I would say Dragon Age Inquisition absolutely holds up as a really good RPG, but it's not one of the best. It's not going to be people's classic, right? Because it came out in a weird transition time for RPGs. And the the nail that has hit the board that has completely shifted uh, all RPGs for the future was The Witcher 3. When that game came out, I mean, obviously The Witcher 3 is a great game. If you haven't played it, absolutely should. Even if you don't like the reactive combat that's going on, it's kind of, you know, if you haven't played the other Witcher games, it does take a little bit getting used to. But once you're used to it, you'll be able to play through the game just fine. But the story, the world, the way the quests work, everything about that game is going to, without a shadow of a doubt, change how RPGs are made for the future. And we're on the precipice of Cyberpunk 2077 coming out. And that is potentially going to be another one of those big moments in RPG history that is going to change the way that RPGs are made, depending on if they took that Witcher juice, that that thing that made The Witcher 3 really good and they improved upon it. If they managed to do that, which it looks like from all the preview stuff that they have, then we're going to get ourselves into a situation where the next Dragon Age game is going to be massively influenced by those two games and it is going to take a massive step into a new direction, a better direction, a direction that will will elevate the Dragon Age series to potentially have another classic on hand, depending on how the development of this next game goes. And maybe you've never played The Witcher 3 uh, in particular. Uh, just, just to be clear about what I'm talking about with what is going or what had changed the, the open world RPG formula and what is the thing that changed RPGs in general was the quest structure mixed with the open world of The Witcher 3. There were quests in The Witcher 3 that you felt like, and this is the best part, and this, I, like, I'm telling you, this is the juice of game development here, is, is in a way tricking your players into thinking that they're making the, the choices, when in reality, you're just kind of manipulating them into the choices that you want them to do or or manipulating them through level design and and game design to get them to go directions that you want them to go and there's a lot of interesting psychology there when it comes to game design that I'm not going to get into in this video that's a that's a whole like hour dissertation video on its own but what they did is they made it so there were a bunch of side quests in The Witcher and you never really knew when going into it, what was a side quest and what was a main quest? Because you would have done something in the game that you could have sworn was a side quest. You're like, this this, this to me as an RPG player in the time that The Witcher 3 came out feels like a side quest. It doesn't feel like it's connected to me finding Siri. It's not connected to me talking to Yennefer or even going and finding Triss. It's just, it's main story-wise, it, it, it feels disconnected. But when you go through the game and you're playing and then all of a sudden you're doing a main story quest that you know is a main story quest 
you've, you've, you know, you're doing something with Siri or you're doing something with Triss. And, and this is something that is important to the core of the game. It will not let you progress unless you finish this quest. Right. And it is making reference and introducing characters that you just dealt with and what you thought was your side quest. The best example of this is the bloody Baron quest in the Witcher three. This is the first time in the game that you really come across this and it, it, pings and resonates through the rest of the game because you're doing this thing with the bloody baron where you're talking to him and he's got this crazy demon child that was like an aborted kid that you have to deal with and it's that whole thing is super dark and sad to deal with that that storyline and you're going through that but you're realizing as you're going through what is presumably a side quest when you first start it you're trying to actually learn the whereabouts of siri during that um that quest and this presumably you know what seems to be a side quest is actually part of the main story of the game and all of the stories in that game are interwoven to make it feel like every single thing is a main quest everything needs to be done everything is different everything is unique and that is where inquisition failed in its open world you do you feel like you're just closing riffs over and over and over and over again and you're getting shards and you're doing this and that stuff is important for the game to progress but it never feels different. In The Witcher 3, these quests that you're embarking on feel different every time, and that is where the major success is. That is where if they can take that formula and improve upon it with Cyberpunk, which it looks like, again, that they're going to, that the entire history of, of RPGs from or the entire future of RPGs is going to be different because of these two huge pillar games that have already done a lot in changing what we perceive is cool and fun to do in RPGs. Another thing to consider in this are some other games that came out since then, um, since Inquisition came out and even since The Witcher 3 came out. I think another big one that cannot go unmentioned is Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, they are fundamentally different in a lot of ways. You know, <laughs> Horizon, very good game, not Dragon Age. It's it's very different. It's, it's got a different feel. It's got a different everything to it. But the sense of the open world and how there's things to go and interact with and explore and you going and doing this stuff does have some Dragon Age Inquisition elements in it. And I think Horizon and the way that that game has developed and, and even the way that um, they have handled their open world is going to be another game that influences the way the next Dragon Age is going to be. When it comes to other Sony properties that have also done that, I would be amiss to not admit that God of War is likely to have an effect on how the next Dragon Age is going to happen. And once you start getting these games in your head, you start getting an idea of like, oh, this is a weird time for RPGs because this is a time in which games are going to influence each other in such a way that, you know, between six years from 2014 to 2020 you can see that the inquisition feels dated already because these games have just jumped each other and have constantly pushed everything forward and that the next dragon age game is going to be a result of all these games that have come out of course you also have andromeda that came out and that game's main issue at launch was and by the way if you don't know we did a full dragon age or a full <laughs> mass effect andromeda playthrough that you can watch um, fun thing about the episode counts on that. So this is just a quick little side tangent, but Dragon Age Inquisition, our series had 190 episodes in it. Um, that's interesting because we did obviously three DLC packs. We did, uh, Jaws of Hakan, we did The Descent and we did Trespasser, but the Jaws of Hakan and Descent were added into what I considered the main series. And then I did Trespasser afterwards. So that's how you get the 190 episodes because the 15 episodes from uh, Trespasser were also added in there. But we had 175 episodes of Dragon Age. And then Mass Effect Andromeda, when it ended, it was on its 175th episode. And I just found that really interesting because it's just kind of funny how uh, gameplay-wise that all works. But uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, the series, has alone just inquisition has 77 hours worth of video that i've uploaded whereas mass effect had 62 hours so you could tell that episode lengths were quite a bit longer in dragon age compared to mass effect but mass effect had very similar issues it had a open world 
I mean, it was an improved open world based on the lessons they learned from Inquisition, but there still felt like, to a huge degree, there were the same things you're doing over and over again on all these planets. The planets changed up the way that you played the game because there were different things going on on each planet. In a way, it felt like the different zones of Inquisition, just a little bit more unique, you know, per planet. But at the same time, you were just doing the same thing. It felt like you were playing Inquisition. And that was because Inquisition uh, very much changed the way that Mass Effect was being developed because they were learning lessons from Inquisition. But it wasn't a big enough gap between those games to mean that they could make a big enough change in the Andromeda open world to make that a better game. And and again, the biggest issue with Andromeda at launch was graphical issues. Once they got those fixed, that game is actually quite good. I think Mass Effect 2 is the best in the series, followed by Mass Effect 3, then Mass Effect 1. But that's because I like clean, smooth gameplay. And then Andromeda, I'm not even considering in that because it feels such a departure from the entire thing, which I think is technically intentional and also hey you know it is an n7 day they did announce on top of the remaster of the trilogy that they're making a new mass effect game that is in super super early development so think like you know at at the 2018 game awards we got the teaser for the next dragon age game uh think think about that that's kind of what's going on now you know now we're in 2020 and we're still know nothing about that game because it's still in early development so it's kind of like we're, we're a ways off from a new Mass Effect and a new Dragon Age, but they are going to be informed by the games that have come before them. And I think, in my opinion, now you could probably make a a good argument for other games to be on this list, and I, and I wouldn't disagree with you. I'd probably be like, yeah, sure, no, that absolutely makes sense. But for me, the other two major games that are going to affect the next Dragon Age have been Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, I would put Baldur's Gate 3 on there, and in fact, I kind of put that in the same vein, because obviously they're made by Larian, and Baldur's Gate is a huge improvement on the Divinity stuff. But I think in general, Divinity Original Sin 2, the way that the tactical stuff worked in that game and how it played out, and even how multiplayer works in that game, including the, the new stuff from Baldur's Gate 3, I think that that's going to have an interesting effect on Dragon Age because I think that the fans or the the creators of Dragon Age are fans of these games too and they're going to be inspired by the way that you play multiplayer in Divinity and in Baldur's Gate and the way that these stories play out and the choices that you make and the choices and effects that you can have in these things. You know, I, I think the best example is in Baldur's Gate right after you get off of the Nautiloid ship, and again, we've done a series on this, so if you really want to go watch it, uh, even though it's in early access right now, right after you get out of the ship, there's a spot that you meet Shadowheart, which is a cleric. She's basically your first companion that you uh, unlock, and you go and talk to her, and you recruit her to your party, but she's like banging on a door trying to get it to open. Now, you can get into that door if you have a rogue, like a Starian, or you are a rogue, and you can lockpick that door, depending on if you succeed or not. You can then just walk into that dungeon and come across a really cool little tiny side story where there's a character that comes back to your camp and is there to resurrect your teammates if they've died and you don't have a, a resurrection scroll. And then it's just like this cool little dungeon. But there's multiple ways into that dungeon. You can go up over the hill and there's a way to go straight down into it if you like break these rocks and get into it or there's a different uh there's there's two other entrances there's like one on this weird like uh water entrance from it and then there is also one to get in from the temple that is on top of it so i feel like that kind of uh level design that kind of game design is gonna be present in new versions of mass effect and and Dragon Age, because that kind of stuff is stuff that we're seeing more and more as time goes on with RPGs. It does make RPGs more complex because level designers have to consider all of the different angles to get in this. But the story of Dragon Age and and Mass Effect and, well, basically any Bioware game has had this kind of branching path thing anyways. Why not take that idea and put it into the actual gameplay as well, like moment-to-moment gameplay? And then finally, I think the next game, that is, or the the game that has the biggest effect on all of this is going to be Anthem and the lessons that Bioware has learned in developing that game. 
Anthem at its core was a flawed game when it released, but the gameplay was so good. And, and this is, it's frustrating. It's frustrating as a fan of Bioware because it's like you guys were really close, but you had this strange amalgamation between a single player Bioware RPG and a multiplayer like um, like a Division 2 or a Destiny. And, and it was this thing that in concept marries very well and works, but it, at its core had so many issues that it didn't. And again, the game has been updated significantly since it launched and there is a reason to go back and play it now if you haven't especially if you have like game pass because uh ea pass or ea access or whatever they call it now is a part of game pass and that is happening on the 10th when the the new xbox comes out so you can like go get game pass and then go play these ea games including i think anthem is going to be on there or at the very least will be on there at one point so you know there is a reason to go back and play it and see what you've missed and everything but the gameplay, because of how smooth and just fun it was to go around in your javelin, I think we're going to see that um, be what determines how well and how smooth the, the gameplay is in the next Mass Effect game. And I think to a large degree has also informed how smooth the gameplay will be for the next Dragon Age game. Like, think about Dragon Age Origins playing as a mage versus Dragon Age Inquisition playing as a mage. You know, you got the really cool animation flow with the staff and everything. It just felt really good to play a mage. But you're going to see an even better version of that, a more fluid version of that with the next Dragon Age because of the lessons they learned with Andromeda and with Anthem and everything else in between. And I think that you can look at Anthem and hate it for what, what it is or like it for what it is. It depends on, you know, your input on what you think Anthem as a game is. But that game is going to have a profound effect on what we see in the next Dragon Age and Mass Effect. Um, I would say if Bioware had their way, they probably would tone down multiplayer aspects for the next Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Now, don't get me wrong. I thought Inquisition multiplayer was fun. I thought Mass Effect multiplayer is a lot of fun. But I could see them with being burned with Anthem a bit, wanting to pull that back a little bit and focus more on the story. But I think EA will want them to focus more on, hey, you can get people to keep playing your game if you have a multiplayer component. And that's, that's kind of like um, an antiquated concept uh that, that that's very you know early 2010 to 2015 i would say as we saw with mass effect 3 and dragon age inquisition i would say is a is perfect examples of that but we're in a situation now where i don't think they can get away with that so they are going to massively learn from the multiplayer of like i said divinity and Baldur's gate and how to implement that um kind of system into more of a, a better multiplayer mode for Dragon Age, whatever the next Dragon Age is. And then on top of that, they've learned a lot multiplayer wise from Anthem. So like those lessons make me more ready for a better multiplayer that they can implement. I just really hope it doesn't distract from what we're going to see gameplay wise for the next Dragon Age. So the last thing that I really want to mention is what we're going to see as far as the story and locations are concerned for the next Dragon Age game. Uh, so we have gotten essentially two things. We've gotten a teaser trailer, as I mentioned, back in 2018 during the Game Awards, which wasn't much. It was just this kind of interesting 3D model of like a, like a strange statue that had red lyrium on the bottom and it looked really cool and... Uh, there's something, and this is, by the way, me not doing really any research other than going back and watching these things. So there's something familiar about it, and I feel like there's something that I need to know about that statue, but I don't think that's the important part of it. Because at the end of that teaser, spoiler alert for Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, Solus starts talking, and we know Solus is the Dread Wolf. It is basically an elven god from... The, the the story that we get in Dragon Age Inquisition and in Trespasser, we get even more of that. But he shows up and he's he's talking to presumably the player um, that you know that you found me or whatever. And uh, that is interesting because that dictates and it's also the hashtag like the Dread Wolf rises. Now this, by the way, this came out right before Anthem 
uh, was going to release. And and this is the probably the most concerning thing, and we've learned about this from a couple of reports since about uh, work conditions within Bioware, which is that when Anthem was coming out, um, it was all hands on decks. They took everybody off of the Dragon Age project and presumably off of any other potential project that they had in the works just to get Anthem in a state where they can launch it. And then even after that, getting it in a state where it's not bad post-launch. So what was the concept of the next Dragon Age game did change because that some of that team got pulled off and, had, and then went back and came up with a, a good concept of it. And there, from the reports that we know, there was a version of the next Dragon Age game that got canned and then they, they kind of had to restart that project. So... It's, uh, it's been a troubled time for development, which is concerning, but at the same time, it does make me wonder whether or not this one teaser that we got is going to be relevant with the Dreadwolf Rises like hashtag thing at the end. Is it going to be about Solus? Is he going to be the big bad evil guy? Maybe. Maybe he is going to be the big bad evil guy, and we'll have to find out. But I don't necessarily think that they wouldn't try to... Um, try to undermine that and like put a put an actual big bi- bad evil guy in there that you have to then team up with uh, the dread wolf for at the end I think that would be really cool but presumably you're playing a new character right you're not going to play the inquisitor you're going to play pff, some other character and I think what's cool about that what's exciting about that is so far they have done a good job of interweaving the threads of the story you know you have the hero of Ferelden making um, mention or having been mentioned in Dragon Age 2 and Dragon Age Inquisition if you happened to impregnate uh, uh, Morrigan, then, you know, that that child shows up in Dragon Age Inquisition. And then in Dragon Age 2, you play as Hawk, and then Hawk shows up in Dragon Age Inquisition. So it's possible that we're going to get the Inquisitor to show up um, in this next Dragon Age game. And actually, I think that would be really cool. But it's like we're clearly going to play a new character. I think that, that that much we know for sure. So that means like, well, where is this game going to take place? Dragon Age Origins took place in Ferelden because of the blight. Um, then Dragon Age 2 took place in Kirkwall. That was it. It was a city. You took place there. Nobody really liked that. So they went way bigger than that for Inquisition. And it took place basically across most of the world. You know, you went to Orle and you went to um, the, uh, what do you call it, Ferelden. And then you also, you know, jumped around to other little bits here and there, even really diving deep into the Frostbacks and whatnot. And I think that's cool. Are they going to have a huge open world like that where you're jumping around to these different locales in the next Dragon Age game? I would say more than likely. But I think that the majority of the game is going to take place into Vinter. And this is something that I mentioned in the playthrough even. I was like, oh, it'd be really cool to actually go to Vinter and see what it is like there. But the reason I say that is because they had, for Gamescom 2020 released like a in development behind the scenes video of like most of the developers just talking about the aspirations of what they hope to make the next dragon age game or their their ideals for it Um, but they did show some concept art some footage here and there and it does look very to venter e i think there's plenty of locations that they showed that were in game or in engine footage of places that didn't look like Tevinter, that looked like going into Dwarven Ruins and going into um, like really snowy areas and stuff. But I think for the most part, I think the game is going to take place in Tevinter and and maybe that's where we find Solus and maybe that's where the big bad evil guy comes from. Or there's there's got to be, and, and this is my my concept on this. I think Corypheus was a pretty big bad evil guy. He was he was a huge threat to the world. You know, there was a giant rift that took place. The Inquisition was very important at stopping the big bad evil guy. Do they go even bigger for this next Dragon Age game and make it even more world ending? Or do they kind of tone it down a bit and put it in one location? And maybe we have um, like Dorian show up because he's back into Venter or something and then have like some of the other characters like Morgan and Alistair show up. Like, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And depending on, and this is the weird thing, it's depending on what choices you made in Inquisition, uh, Hawk may be dead. So does Hawk show up if he doesn't die? Or like there's, there's um, just because of the nature of 
making these games where they're really heavily threaded together and there's a big through line there's a lot of questions to be asked there but i think we'll see a lot of the main dragon age inquisition cast return and i think we'll see the inquisitor return and i think for the most part we will also see um a new character that we're playing as into venter uh, maybe maybe you start as nothing actually i think that one of the trailers mentions that is i think it's the behind the scenes thing that you start with no power and you you know you work your way up so yeah you could probably start into venter as a slave and do things like that but i think the one thing that is on my wish list of this is what i would love is if they did an origins style character creator where you have an origin story that your character is. You're not just a person that was at the Temple of Sacred Ashes when it blew up during the beginning of Inquisition. No, you are, you know, an, an elf slave in Deventer, or you are a, um, f like a farmer or something like that you can choose from and then have your backstory be affected by that and have the rest of the game be affected by that too, kind of like in Origins. I think that would be really cool. That's like my big wish list item. But yeah, I think that for the next Dragon Age game, we're going to go to Tevinter. I think for Dragon Age Inquisition, the game holds up as its own game. But when you compare it to games that have come since then, in the last six years, it really falls short. It feels super repetitive, and that is my biggest complaint about it. But the rest of it just gets me so hyped. I love the story. I love the characters. I love everything about it except the repetitiveness. And it's a shame because that game, I think, would be a classic if it weren't for that. But with all the other games that have come since, I think it's gonna massively change the next Dragon Age game. I think we're gonna get a situation where the next Mass Effect and the next Dragon Age are going to be superb games because they have learned their lessons from the games that have come before, including games that have released since then. And that is super exciting for me. So as we approach the sixth anniversary of my Dragon Age Inquisition series, I'm just really thankful for the people that stuck around and watched that entire thing because like I said, the, the episodes have significantly uh, more views than I would have ever anticipated. And whether that be because back then playing a game like that all the way through on YouTube was kind of a big deal, you know, uh, streaming a game like that now is not such a big deal, but actually doing a full playthrough of it on a YouTube channel still kind of is. And, you know, like The Witcher, for example, is also a big undertaking, undertaking rather, or so is, you know, Baldur's Gate. And that's the kind of stuff that I, I think that I specialize at nowadays. So I'm so thankful for those viewers that we have and that we still have. You know, you're probably one of them, if you're listening to this, um, from that series. And there's plenty of people that came to the channel from it. So I just wanted to celebrate it. I wanted to take a look back and discuss one of my favorite series and figure out what's coming next. Or more importantly, figure out what we should expect or try to expect or anticipate. And I'm sure as we get more development updates for whatever the next game is, if we get a big trailer or whatever within the next year, I'll probably do another video because uh, as it turns out, I do love me some Dragon Age quite a bit. And going back and playing Inquisition reminded me of that. And that is probably its biggest thing that has stuck with me. It's like, oh yeah, Dragon Age is fantastic and I can't wait to play a new game. I really want to hear about your guys' crazy Dragon Age theories or what the next game might be. So let me know in the comments or what you really hope for for the next Dragon Age game. Or do you think that Inquisition even holds up as a game today? But with all of that being said, thank you guys for watching and we shall see you guys next time.